Hey everyone, Tommy here with TFL Classics and today we have a really cool vehicle we are featuring on the show. This is part of a new series we are doing called Dude I Love or Hate My Ride Home Edition and it's where you guys send us videos of your cool classic cars and we post them up, we make them famous. And today we've got a Jeep J20 from Burt. And if you've never heard of a J20, don't feel bad because it's kind of a nameplate that has disappeared but was one that was huge in the 70s and 80s. When you think of full-size pickup trucks today, you think of one of five companies, Ford, GM, Ram, Toyota, or Nissan, and it feels like it's always been like that. But that is not the case. Go back to 1988 and there was another player in the full-size truck market, Jeep. You see, as early as 1962, Jeep had been building full-size trucks for the American market. And initially they were called the Gladiator. No, they weren't small Wrangler-based trucks. They were actually big old square monsters. And this is a classic example of a 1978 J20. The owner, Bert, is gonna take us through his wicked cool Jeep pickup. Let's take a look. Hello, Fast Lane Truck viewers. What you're looking at is my 1978 Jeep J20 pickup truck. It's been in the family since 1977. In 1994, I saved it from a trip to the junkyard and did a frame off restoration, brought it back to a standard pickup. Last year, I got interested in overlanding and decided to turn it into an overland rig. Up front, we have JD, uh, JD speaker uh, LED headlights. There's LED turn signals and markers all the way around. A worn Xenon 12 platinum winch, tow, uh, rated hooks, recovery hooks. BFG KM3s on Dick pack rims. Up top, to add to that retro styling, we have the KC Pro 6 light bar. Turns night into day. Roof rack with uh, accessories for camping. Lightner rack system, uh, pickup rack system with uh, roto packs both sides, uh, including the uh, uh, gas can in the back I got about uh, 10 just over 10 uh, gallons of fuel storage capacity ARB roof mounted tent a Lightner box system in the back we have a disc brake conversion so no more dealing with drum brakes swing out tire rack tire carrier with the same uh, spare there's the scepter 20 liter fuel tank in the back, we have a Snowmaster refrigerator. It slides out. The weather guard box houses my uh, extra battery, shore charger, 1,000 watt inverter, and the ARB twin air compressor. Max tracks mounted on the uh, Lightner system boxes. KC highlights chase light. ARB awning with the uh, same Lightner box system on this side. Plenty of storage on the truck. The roof rack is a front runner and it's a wonderful rack. You can almost lift the truck up by it. It has uh, both the shovel mount and the axe mount. You also see several antennas on the truck. There's GRMS, a ham radio, and CB radio in the truck. Under the hood, there's not much uh, change. It's the stock AMC 360 motor. I did put a Holley uh, Truck Avenger carburetor on it. I also upgraded the ignition system. Uh, and there's my dual battery charger and controller for both the front uh, battery and rear battery. Both batteries are Odyssey Extreme uh, AGM batteries. I did put an MSD electronic ignition system on the truck for more reliability and a new MSD distributor to go with the six off-road MSD controller. There is plans to put a Holley Sniper fuel injection system in the truck so that when I'm uh, at high elevation, I don't have to worry about uh, jetting the carburetor. Also put uh, under hood lights, which uh, don't do much in the daytime, but at night it keeps you from having to hold the flashlight in your mouth to do some work on the truck. 
Let's go take a peek inside. Garmin inReach for those moments when you may need some help or just to send text back to the family and let them know you're okay. Stock instrument cluster, nothing's really changed there. Accessory switch for the aux battery, chase lights, and the roof mounted uh, six uh, light bar. Ham radio. ARB front and rear locker switches and the ARB compressor switch. GRMS radio. And then up here above the head in the standard truck fashion is a CB radio. Well, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed taking a peek at my 1978 J20. Heck yes, we absolutely enjoyed taking a peek at this Jeep. It is so cool. Now, this is the portion of the video where we rate your ride, and I have to give this Jeep an easy 11 out of 10. Here's why. I don't know where the Jeep J series pickups went, but they completely disappeared from the road. You never see them anymore out in the real world. And Burt has done a great job restoring and preserving this classic example. The second reason I love them, they're very off-road worthy. Solid axles, front and back, AMC 360 in this Jeep, which is pretty darn strong. And I love the way he's done the rack and the light bar up top. There's nothing cooler in this world than a classic Overlander. Well, if you want to submit your classic ride to TFL Classics, here's how you do it. Hey, thank you for sending us your video here to TFL Studio so we can make it famous on Dude I Love My Ride Home Edition. Well, we noticed that a lot of people had some issues sending us files because emails are just not suitable for video. However, we do have a much better solution. It's a file service called WeTransfer, and WeTransfer is a way you can securely and safely and freely, we should say, send us your video files. That way the quality is better and there's no issues going down the road. So here's how you do it. If you're planning on using your cell phone to upload the files, like I think many of you will be, all you have to do is open up your browser, and this works both on Apple and Android, and type in tflstudios.wetransfer.com, and then hit enter. Now it will take you to this page, and you'll see a big button that says send a file. Click that, and then tap I agree, and it'll give you a plus arrow where you can actually add your files add up to 20 gigabytes. So click that. I'm going to say photo library, videos, and then I'm going to select my video and hit done. So there you can see your video is added. In the message section, please add your name and your truck. So in this case, it'll be Tommy Micah and the truck or car or whatever lawnmower is 2020 Nissan Titan, just so we know what's coming our way. And then click next. And then you plug in your own personal email. And what it'll do is send you a verification just to make sure you're a real person and not a robot and click transfer. So it says verify your email. Go ahead and check your email and you'll see a code. And then go ahead and plug in your verification code. All right, and verify. So once you're verified, you'll see it will upload your file to the internet and you can see it going there. And then, and then it will send a verification that you have completed your transfer and that we have received it. Now you can actually do the same exact process on a computer, it's just as easy. Let me show you. Here on the computer, it's the same exact process. So simply type in tflstudios.wetransfer.com and hit enter. And then here you'll see a little bubble that says add your files. So click on the file you want to add, then plug in your email address, your personal email address, and a message. Once again, your name and your vehicle. So it'll ask you to verify your email again, and then you'll be ready to go. Uh, and we'll get your files a little bit quicker, it'll be a little bit easier. Well, thank you so much for contributing, and if you have any questions, email me, ask at tfltruck.com, and we'll help you through them. Thank you guys so much for watching and taking a really cool look at a very unique pickup that has seemingly disappeared from the real world. And thank you to Bert for sending us this amazing video. Head over to TFL Car and TFLTruck.com for the latest and greatest in new and old classic reviews. Mm -hmm.